Hi guys, Tuber here with a new video and this video is a class tuning change for next week and this is quite a big patch to be fair so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it and do uh, give my opinion about those changes if it's going to move the needle so let's see right away Blood DK got a buff Vampiric Strike damage increased by 30% um, so maybe they will start playing some line. Um, infliction of sorrow now deals 20% of the remaining disease damage to the enemy when it extends its duration. So it's above 5%. 130% uh, on the um, consumption instead of 100%. Uh, grants 12% strength instead of 8%. And a frenzied blood thirst now increases the damage of death strike by 6% per stack towards 5%. So it. In PvP, Blood DK is like not, excuse me, that is a Java checker. Um, Blood DK is not like the super duper very popular spec, it is like just a tank spec, but it might see some play in Solo QRBG. Uh, I think in Solo Shuffle, it's, it, could, it could be played, but it's not never generally played for the damage. But this could be maybe a lot, like 30% is a lot, so it could change. But Vampiric Strike is not something you are like always popping. Uh, and from what I understand uh, is that in the mid season um, it will change on how it procs Vampiric Strike. So right now it procs on a defensive instead of like dancing, um, thanks, dancing rune weapons. So I think it will be better once uh, they have like that change at mid season. Um, having Unanta got a huge buff on Aldrachi Riva, so Wounded Quarry damage increased by 100%, Warblades Hunger damage increased by 100%, and Reaver's Glaive damage increased by 15%. So I don't know how big those changes are, but 100% is like, it's going to be noticeable, I think, no? So if someone knows about Aldrachi Reaver in the comment section below, please let me know how big it is. I know that the other hero talent is mostly played. I think this one is like a bit harder to pull, pull off and for the same results pretty much. Um, but maybe this will move the needle for DH to actually play Adrachi, Riva and play and learn it to play it to be, to be played. Uh, Vengeance Demon on Tons Mastery, Fell Blood effectiveness is increased by 20%. Shadow Souls healing per soul increased by seven like two seven percent instead of six percent. And soul barrier base absorb value increased by 50% and absorb value per soul increased by 100%. So I don't know about Vengeance Demon Hunter. It's like the least knowledgeable tank spec for me. Uh, so I don't know how, how big those changes are. And I'm more, mostly for PvP, so I don't think it changes too much. Uh, Feral Druid got actually a buff on Wild Stalker. So chance for Bloodseekers Vines to grow on a single target is unchanged, but slightly increased when Rip and Rake are on multiple targets. So PvP is quite big, uh, and Wallstalker bursting growth damage increased by 10%, which that is kind of big. Um, it's like a buff. I don't know how it is for the PvP side of things, but so we'll have to see. All healing increased by 5% for restoration druids, but not affected by PvP. And scenario ward healing increased by 40%. This is big. This is like this is big. This this means a lot in PvP. So I wonder if it's going to be like significant enough to make it more like meta. Right now it is not, so we'll have to see. Augmentation Evoker Blistering Scales grants you 20% of your armor instead of 30%, so that is a nerf for Augmentation, also PvP. Devastation Evoker Flame Shaper, which is the hero turn that no one uses currently, like I think it's Scale Commander. Uh, consume Flame damage increased by 25%, so whenever you have a Fire Breath you're doing an Engulf, that Consume Flame damage is going to be increased by 25%. But engulf damage reduced by 20% PvP combat. It's so such a weird change to write here instead of the PvP section. So I don't know if there is a PvP section to be fair. Uh, Preservation Evoker got a reverse buff actually. Like engulf healing increased by 20%. But the nerf on consume flame healing reduced by 50%. Which is on Dream Breath. Um, now this is quite big. And I think from what I've understood... Flame Shepherd is actually like seeing no play in PvP, so I think that is a bit harsh to be seen in PvP combat as well. Um, a huge nerf on Beast Mastery, guys. Like, BM Hunter got it good for a bit, but the nerf that is live on the mid-season patch 
will also be live on the balancing patch for this uh, like next week so basilisk color which is the modifier on the amount of dots on the enemy that gives you more damage that is going to be nerfed to four percent instead of ten percent so it is going to be significant now you're still going to play that because it is still a very good talent but it is very much nerfed so if you could have like five dots on an enemy it would be five fifty percent now if you have 5 dots on the enemy, it's only going to be 20%, so it's a very big nerf. So it's going to be noticeable. And they buffed kill command damage increased by 15, uh, by 18% and pet damage increased by 4%. This is compensation, but it is nowhere near uh, strong. Like, it's, it's a huge nerf in general, because you could have a lot of dots also from other sources, which would augment your damage, um, which now... Obviously, it's going to be a lot less, so I wonder when, where it's going to be taken. Survival so Hunter got a buff on their 2 set, which is increased wildfire bomb damage by 8%, which is also going to be transpiring in the PvP side of things, and also 4 set now increases the Raptor Strike by 20% on targets afflicted by wildfire bomb, which was 10%, so it's going to be a, nerf, uh, a buff for PvP. Hero Talents for Mage, Frostfire Firebolt damage increased by 15%, Frostfire Infusion damage increased by 50%, Frostfire Empowerment damage bonus increased to 60%, so it's all buffs to Frostfire by the way, and Frost Mastery now grants 2% instead of 1%, so these are quite heavy buffs, I don't know if it's going to be changed on the uh, PvP side of things, we'll have to see. But this, like, these are really, really big. Like, this is going to be noticeable in PvP. If it stays like this. Um, monks. A lot of changes on the hero tons. So we have Master of Harmony, Stored Vitality, causes an additional 40% healing and damage. It was 25. This is a pretty heavy buff. I don't know if it was actually needed for Master of Harmony. Because, again, maybe it was needed. Because the, the other one is, like, the Celestial one was probably the most played one for Mist Weaver. Um, Broom also got a few changes, so we have Coalescence now causes Aspect of Harmony to increase damage and healing taken by 20%. Chi Wave and Chi Burst deals 100% increased damage. This is going to be, okay, interesting. For Chi Burst, Chi Burst is actually like a, a good like button to press for Broom Master. Overall Force increased to 20% instead of 15%, and Balance Stratagem increases to 5% instead of 3%. So, although overall buff on Master of Harmony. Miss Weaver, Colossus now causes, uh, causes, oh, increases damage and healing taken by 30%. Nice. And Aspect of Harmony now stores 30% of healing done, and it was 20%. Uh, I, I wonder if it's worked, like, I guess it works together, but we'll have to see. Windwalker, Celestial Conduit now scales its damage with Mastery Combo Strike, so this is like a big buff to Celestial Conduit. A lot of changes on the Holy Paladin and the, Paladin and the Retribution Paladin inside. Um, I'm actually excited, so we'll have to see. All healing reduced by 5% and does not affect PvP combat. That's big. Lightsmith changes. Awakening causes Blessing of the Forge to spawn a sacred weapon when extending the duration of Avenging Wrath. That's a buff, but no one really plays Lightsmith in PvP. Hammer and Anvil's healing effect re uh, reduces increased to 20 yards instead of 5 yards, so that's a buff. Hammer and Anvil seal increased by 150%. Mm, it might be interesting if you're playing like melee wings, because the, the healing is okay, um, and it seems that it's going to be way more useful with the AoE. And Divine Guidance effect increased by 50%. Huh. Maybe Lightsmith is going to see some play with current like states of affair. We'll, we'll have to see. Protection or a uh, paladin. So that's inter interesting um, because they kind of need a buff. Um, they are really, really bad right now, especially in PvP as well. Um, all ability damage increased by 6%. World of Glory healing increased by 20%. Light of the Titans now heals over 10 seconds instead of 5 15 seconds. If it's the same amount, it is a buff. Faith in the Light duration increased to 6 seconds instead of 5. Uh, Sacred Weapons damage and healing increased by 30%. Forge Reckoning. Increased by 30%. Blessed Assurance increases the damage of your next Crusader Strike. Hammer of the Righteous or Blessed Hammer by 200% instead of 100%. That this is quite big as well. Divine Guidance, hit damage and healing increased by 50%. Same as Holy Paladin. 
Hammer and Anvil damage increase by 40%, interesting. And Sanctification grants 2% increase by primary stat instead of 1. Now, Retribution Paladin. Now, this is going to be like something that is going to make or break the spec, we'll have to see. Because Templar is right now not really used in PvP, but this might make it more usable. So, Shake the Heavens lasts for 10 seconds, uh, 8 seconds, so that's buff. Sanctification duration increases 12 seconds instead of 10 seconds buff. Final Reckoning now increases the damage of Hammer of Rav Light by 30%. This is, this, is, this is really cool. Like, this is going to be interesting. Does damage. Hammer of Light main target damage increased by 25%. Hammer of Light, the secondary target damage increased by 75%. This is this is big, man, guys. Like, Hammer of Light actually hurts, but it just needs, like, a lot of stuff to make it very much, like, hurt, hurt. But this is, like, like the accumulation of all the buffs might make it very strong for PvP as well. And this is also quite good, because, again, the stacks are very hard to reach. But if it's, like, nerfed as well, like, buffed, but nerfed, like, stacks-wise... That's going to be quite good. So Light's Deliverance now triggers at 50 stacks instead of 60. Undisputed Ruling grants 15% haste instead of 12. And that's for 8 seconds. Wrathful Descent now deals 125% of the Empyrean Hammer damage to nearby enemies. This is like um, AoE. Uh, and Empyrean Hammer now benefits from Penitence and Burn to Ash. This is big, actually. Like, this is... This goes well with the current build as well. Okay, uh, Templar might be pl seeing some play, actually. I think this is going to be quite good. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to test it once it's live next week. Shadow Priest got an overall buff. Man. Okay, Mind Blast 10%, Shadow Word Death 10%, Void Bolt 10%, uh, Shadow Wave Operation also 10%. Entropic Rift, 10% as well, Void Blast, 20%, Collapsing Void, 10%, Void Flay, 10%, Inner Coetus now increases, so the, the overall dot damage is going to be increased by 25% instead of 20%. Overall, big buffs to Shadow Priest, like it's going to be noticeable as well, especially if you're playing like Void Weaver, this is going to be like huge stonks for Shadow Priest. Now, I don't know if it's like the thing that they need, I think Door of Shadow would be the best, but I don't know if they're going to ever uh, reinstate Door of Shadow for Priests, or at least for Shadow Priest. Um, but that would be a good addition, to be fair. Rogue, Assassination Rogue. Caustic Spatter, which is the AoE thing. Uh, poison damage dealt to nearby targets reduced to 40%, so that's a nerf. Um, two set bonus chance to trigger Val Tincture increased, so that's a buff to two set. And poison damage buff now incorrectly affects it. And Venom King's Bane inappropriate hero town. So it was not affecting in Venom, so that's going to be also a good buff. Forset now correctly applies upon gaining five stacks of Valve Tancture instead of six. So it's going to be an overall uh, net in overall damage. So it's going to be quite interesting to, to see and uh, how it goes. Outlaw Rogue, after they nerfed it. They buff it again. So Auto Rogue now, all ability damage increased by 4%, Dispatch increased by 6%, and uh, the per missing targets increased to 4% instead of 2% from the talent tree. Um, this is going to be good. I mean, it's not enough PvP, I think it just needs way more, but um, it's a good start, I guess. Uh, 4% and then also 6% to Dispatch. Restoration Shaman. So, Urban Harmony now causes Earth Shell to reduce damage taken by 3% instead of 5, and that is only affecting PvE. And Acid Rain damage reduced by 20%. That's kind of sucky for PvP, but it's alright though. I'm not going to join this all shuffle, I want to make the video. Um, Demology Warlock, Pact of the Eredruin, Doom Grass deal 20% increased damage. Grimoire Felguard now increases the damage of the summoned Felguard by 60%. So that's that's big. That's a good buff. Felguard damage increased by 10%. And Gloom Hound, Gloom Slash damage increased by 20%. It's, those are good buffs, but I don't know if it's like the thing that they really need. I think they need really like Demon Bolt to hurt again. So you could actually like be scary by yourself as well. Okay, Arms Warrior and Hero Tons. Interesting. Let's see. Closest Smash causes, so Arterial Bleed causes a close Might to increase the damage dealt by 3% instead of 2%, so that's buff. So you could have 10%, so it's going to be 30% increased damage on random deep wounds, why not? 
Uh, no stranger to pain increases the, the total damage increase ignored by 20% instead of 15%. Interesting. Mountain Tain, that's more for Fury and Protection Warrior. Lightning Strikes increased by 24%. Ground Current, also 25%. And less Rage Generation from Lightning Strikes. Um, killing Cyclone bonus in oh, reduced to 10%. Aye, 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 aye. That's a huge nerf for Arms and Fury, man. Especially arms because like Colossus, Colossus is not that good right now. All right, and opportunities. So this is oh, this is a huge nerf again, man. They're also nerfing arms, bro. Like they're nerfing the thing with overpower. Now it's twenty percent instead of thirty percent. Like that's crazy. They really want to nerf arms like this. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. This is like a huge nerf. I wonder about this. Is going to be uh, in for arms in PvP, but this is like this kind of sucks, man. I think this is like this. Sh this should be only Fury, Fury only. Now they just like nerfed arms as well. Why not Colossus though? But like, place of all already tickles for nothing whenever you're not playing Slayer. So I don't know. Mm, Fury Warrior. Uh, buff for two set like 15% instead of 10% for their next rampage and when raging blow res resets is cooldown the damage of your next blood test is increased by 20% stacking up to two times instead of 10% that's a buff so they're nerfing slayer but they want to buff fury still mountain thing gets a buff for thunderclap generating rage um, increases blood, blood test and rampage damage by 30% instead of 20% from strength of the mountain and Dormus Might increases the range you blow and execute damage by 25% instead of 15%. So again, they wanna they wanna buff Mountain Thane, which I understand. Uh, because it's not good right now in PvP especially, but in PvE as well. So why not? Protection Warrior Mountain Thane generates more rage. Now, now is the interesting part. PvP changes. <laughs> a lot of changes for an OEDK. Good luck, man. An OEDK got like overall nerf to diseases by 15%. So, viral and plague, frost fever, and blood plague. But also, death coil. Because it was critting for 700k. This is going to be noticeable. 15% as well. A huge buff to Havoc Demonotary Malpian. 4% to all ability damage. With also the reaver changes, it might be propelling them towards that. But also, Immolation Aura damage increased by 13.6%. That's very precise in PvP Pokemon. In PvP combat, it could be a bit higher though. It could be like the dots should not be there. It should be 136. I don't know. I think it would be too strong if it was that. But I think 14% is okay. Feral Druids, Ferocious Wound, which is the PvP talent, got nerfed to 3% st per stack instead of 5%. That's quite big. And uh, Restoration Druid got the he uh, healing buff on Tranquility, which often doesn't get used for that. And Mana Regen is now reduced to 40% instead of 50%, so that's a buff to Regen of Mana. Hunters, yes, Saf, please, uh, Unnerf. Survival of the Fintest now provides 25% damage reduction in PvP combat instead of 30%. Survival Tactics, wow. They nerfed that. It has now a duration of two seconds instead of three. Ooh, that's a big nerf, man. That's the that's the feign death talent, right? Well, so whenever you're feign deathing, it's actually like immune, like it's kind of immune damage to be fair because it's like high damage reduction. You can like barely do damage to them. So instead of three seconds, it's actually a two second CD, a two two seconds duration, which is crazy this is like 33 percent nerf right so this is really big hero town smoke screen now applies survival to fit is at 50 percent of effectiveness so that's going to be very big nerf to dark ranger and don't look back if effectiveness reduced by 50 percent pvp combat okay so overall hunters are going to be the target again which was very hard these days because it was actually very like sturdy this is going to be Kinda making it a bit le easier to kill even through CDs. So it's a good thing, I think, because Hunter being tanky is okay for them, but it's too strong for the amount of damage it does. Now, there is enough on Frigid Winds. 
Um, this is like the slow of the root, something like that. It's now effective by 50% effectiveness in PP. It's good. I think it's good. Um, arcane missiles damage increased by 30% instead of 20%. So it's a buff to arcane mage and arcane or as well 40% instead of 30%. This is this is big, but I think it's deserved. Again, uh, they, they they do damage, but it's like the the constant damage is not that good. Fire got a huge buff, by the way. Power Blast by 20%. Fireball by 150%. Scorch by 300%. By the way, Scorch is going to hurt by a lot whenever you're getting the, the proc. Uh, Ignite damage increased by 15%. World in Flames got nerfed, uh, which is fine because it's Flame Strike. And Glass Cannon. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you do that? This is crazy. They just don't want you to use it. So, <clears throat> Glass Cannon is now decreasing health by 30% instead of 15%. Nobody's going to play that, by the way. Nobody. Nobody. And increases by 20% the damage of Fireball, Ignite, and Scorch. Basically, just throw it out because you got literally the buff from Fireball and Scorch for free. Just don't use Glass Cannon. That's how I see if you're a fire mage, just don't, don't use fire and you're going to be fine. Uh, oh, you, you can't see. I'm going to do like this. Like, like this you can see. So, you see glass cannon here? Now it decreases health by 30% instead of like 15%. This is like really big. Like this is like crazy. Like th this is like making it unplayable. Unplayable, but you kind of got it for free here, right? It's 150%, 30%, 300%. This is like unneeded anymore. Like, this is not needed. They could literally just remove it to be fair. Like, they could remove it because this is like literally compensating it. Ignite got 15%, and the rest got like way more. So, um, remove this, play something else. Um, Shaman, we got Shaman Healing Stream Totem. Increased by 15% PvP command. That's also for Enhancement and Elemental Shaman. And also Restoration Shaman, by the way. Elemental Shaman got a buff on Lightning Bolt by 15%. Chain Lightning by 15%. And Tempest by 15%. So, it's good for Stormkeeper. No, I, I, I don't know. It's, I think the build is still about Lava Bursts and, and the Primordial Waves and, and your Farseer. So, I don't know if it's going to be like enough to make you go to Stormbringer uh, or play like a Lightning build with Farseer. Because that is going to be more effective with the mid-season change, where Farseer is a bit more generalized. Which is not right now, and right now it's still around Lava Bursts. Um, but that could be significant damage for Stormkeeper though. So I don't know. We'll have to test it. Restoration Shaman got actually a buff on Healing Wave and Healing Surge. Um, it's not like they're spamming it. So it's going to be good if you are actually healing a lot by doing it. But um, right now Riptide is actually healing the most with the totems as well. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Affliction Warlocks got nerfs. Woohoohoo! Guys! The effectiveness of demon skin's armor bonus is no longer reduced by 50% in PvP command. So that's a buff. Demonic resilience now reduces the damage taken by your primary pet by an additional 67% in PvP command. Um, uh, this is good. This, this is a good buff. A good buff to Demonology Warlock, especially. Affliction Warlock got a nerf on everything, guys. This is going to kill the sp like it's not going to kill the spec, but it's going to kill the the Soul Harvester build. I think. Now I could I, I could be wrong, but I think at that moment it's maybe a bit better to play like uh, Hellcaller. Uh, but Malevern Visionary damage reduced by thirty percent. It did a lot of damage, and it's an instant, and you cannot cannot really defend into into that. Um, and it's like just pop Dark Lair and you do a lot of damage directly. Uh, Shadow Bolt Volley damage reduced by 25%, so it did around 300k, so 25% out of that, it's respectable. It's like a good, it's a, it's a bit more than, it's a bit more than uh, 70k, you know, so it's going to be, it's, go it's going to be noticeable, I think, so... It's a good change, good change, because it was like added damage on your Shadow Bolt. 
Soul Harvester, we get the reaping, reaping damage reduced, reduced by 20%, Soul Anathema 20%, and Demonic Soul 20%. So every time you're going to do a Malefic Rupture with like a Succulent Soul um, Shard, it's going to deal 20% less damage, but also your uh, Nightfall procs from your Shadow Bolt is going to be reduced by 20%. So it's overall like a good thing. This is like all the passives that were like attached to Shadow Bolt. It's better to nerf that instead of Shadow Bolt. So Shadow Bolt is still usable in the Hellcaller build. Because in the Hellcaller build, like Nightfall procs is not really the thing that is going to like ruin you. But with um, Soul Harvester, this is like a huge banana that is going to send onto you and like implode you. So it's a good nerf. It's actually a good nerf. So I personally want them to play Hulkar to like a bit more than Soul Harvest. So right now Soul Harvest is like dominating because even though you need to cast, you just deal too much damage. And it's like you are still topping meters if you're playing okay. So Demology World got a buff on Demon Bolt. Like I said, if Demon Bolt actually like hurts a bit, it could be interesting. So this is a good buff. Uh, Warrior, we got a few changes. This is going to be interesting. Defensive stance now reduces damage taken by 15% PP combat instead of 10%. So you could actually stay in defensive stance without like feeling bad. So this is going to be quite good. Arms Warrior, a few buffs. Execute buffs by 15% PP combat. This is huge. More strike increased by 55% PP combat instead of 35%. This is also huge. This is like crazy huge, by the way. This is going to be feeling it like very cool and very nice to play around. Master and Commander now reduces the cooldown of Rallying Cry by two minutes. So it's going to be a one minute CD and increases its effectiveness by an additional 10%. I think I will be using it every single time. If I don't use War, War, War um, uh, the Warbringer, like, um, Anyways, the, the flag, I don't even know the name. I play arms, I don't even know the name. But the flag where you're going to reduce the CC, if you're not playing that, you could play this. And your team is going to like you for that because you're going to save lives. But you also can save yourself every single minute. This is going to be big. Um, I think this is going to be making it very much needed in a lot of comps. Um, and the buff to more strike and execute is actually very welcome. Um, I would like to see a buff to Blazestorm, but I think they don't like Blazestorm to deal damage. Um, and I think the biggest change that they could do for arms to make it better, instead of like buffing more strike, it would be to actually, excuse me, you cannot see. Oh man, my layout is very bad. So sorry guys. So here you can see the buffs to, to end birth and nerfs towards Warlock and Warrior, but Monster and Commander. Two minutes is really, really big. Like the reduction to to one minute, so it's going to be a one minute rallying cry, is gigantic. This is like a big change, like bigger than you would know. And more strike, doing twenty percent more damage, is also going to be quite good, quite good, like very good actually. And execute as well, fifty percent. I think now. The biggest change that you could do is just bring back double blaze storm, but I don't know if they really want it. Uh, I kind of miss Hurricane, like back in the day, Hurricane was like, like back in the day, I mean, Dragonflight, Hurricane was like my staple talent. I really like to do Blazestorm to increase the damage that I'm going to do with my more Strike. Right now this is gone, so I guess those changes are going to be good. Now, I don't, I don't know if like arms, well, they did lack damage, so I don't know. We'll have to see with the force plus also the crit build I'm playing, plus also the increased damage on more strike. It could be actually tipping it over the edge. But you know what they could do? It's just like instead of buffing more strike, they could just like buff the modifiers to for martial prowess and ex execution's precision because it's kind of doing the same. If you're doing overpower, overpower, you're getting like right now 21%, I think, uh, buff towards more strike. And you're giving a 20% buff here, so you could easily just put more power to that, so you could actually prepare your overpowers and your more strike to deal more damage. It would be feeling less um, unjustified. Like that, that that buff is good, but the, the thing is, right now you have this buff, and they will still have to buff it because the modifiers are not there. Uh, so we'll have to see.
And protection war got also a buff to execute. It actually hurts on protection warriors though, so it's a good buff. Overall, I'm very satisfied for this um, patch note. Actually, like they nerfed MM Hunter um, by a lot with the defensive uh, nerfs. They nerfed BM Hunter, although I don't know if it's really deserved, but they nerfed it. They nerfed uh, slows and roots from uh, mages. I think frigid frigid winds. Am I wrong, or is it like the is it the buff from is it the buff from the water elemental, or is it like the roots? I don't know. Because then it would be on the frost side, right? Uh, I could actually check it, but um, yeah, I'm a bit too lazy for that right now. Fire mage buff. That's actually huge, and I think nobody will be playing class cannon anymore. Um, there is no reason anymore to to do so. I'm going to move like this. I think it's better. Um, then nobody's going to play this. Um, Elemental shaman got, got buffed. That's cool, and not one of the things that are probably very frustrating. Like for example, lava burst spams. Um, so that's cool. A fiction walk nerfs, which is like very welcome to be fair. They actually didn't nerf. Feral Druid too hard, man. They actually like. I think Feral Druid is still S tier. Well, for example, the S tiers, the other S tiers, like for example, uh, for example, uh, the the um, Affliction Walks, for example, the Unholy Decays, they got like hit very hard. And BM Hunter as well, although that's not really S tier in my books. Um, they got also hit, so I don't know. There's a lot of things that are like hit and. I don't know if it's really going to change the meta because of Feral Druid not being hit. Uh, but I'm, I'm very satisfied about like the nerfs to survivability from Hunter, um, from the Unholy DK nerfs, which is a good thing. Uh, even though I I am playing Unholy DK, so it's shooting in my own foot, but this is like very deserved. Um, and Warlock change is really good, and Arms change is really good, and just in general, I think the nerfs towards uh, Slayer is unjustified for arms, in my opinion. And I think uh, the hero tones from uh, from Colossus, for example, which are not really that impactful, in my opinion. But again, uh, I don't know if they're going to plan it to change it. So overall, I'm very satisfied about these changes. I'm going to test, especially uh, Retribution Party with Templar. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it again. Thank you for watching the video, really appreciate you. Sorry for the scuffed uh, images. Like, again, I think whenever I'm scrolling and I'm watching something underneath, you're, you didn't really see the messages, but hopefully, you did have the time to read everything. And my explanation was good enough so you could actually uh, follow the video without any problems. Um, I'm very happy about this patch, and I'm, I'm like again excited for uh, Wednesday in EU to have those changes again. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.